What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to dive on into Frozenheim. Uh, Frozenheim was a game I think we covered back during a Steam Festival, and then we missed the release, but we played the demo which had like a brief introduction to the narrative of the game. But if you've never seen Frozenheim before, this is kind of a game that's somewhere in between like an Anno game and like an RTS. Like, somewhere in that midpoint, although like a very, very casual version of both as it stands right now. I haven't covered the game in about seven or eight months, and it's had about five or six content patches since the last time we checked it out when it was a Steam Festival demo. So I figured now would be a good time to take a look at the product proper now that it's charging for money and see if the game is any good. So if after watching this video you wanted to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below in the description. I have it on fairly good authority that the storyline mode, it's only got like four missions in right now, and people are saying that it's taken about five to six hours to cover that. I wouldn't know because I haven't played that portion, I've been much more interested in the survival mode. I don't know about you guys, but I really, really like survival modes where you're like building and there's just endless hordes of enemies attacking you. That tends to be what I focus on with any title like this. And so while I am planning on playing the campaign at some point, once it's finished, I've been playing the survival mode. So anyways, down below, description, can wishlist game. That's the main point that I wish to get across. On top of that, you can also look down below in the description. You'll be able to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live most days of the week. So let's dive on into single player. We are going to do survival mode this time around because I think the last time we covered the game, we did the first couple missions in the campaign mode. And so ultimately, if you want to see what the campaign looks like, you can go back and watch the older video. This time around, with all the new stuff in, I find that survival mode gives us a sandboxy flair that allows us to kind of just play around with what we want to play around with and experience the game at our own pace. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we get to pick our color, apparently if we're from Kirk Jaboer. I can't even say that, so I think we're going to have to try it. No, I don't think Kirk Jaboer is going to work. Uh, we are from the Kingdom of Gurgen. There we go. The Kingdom of Gurgen! Like the sound you make when you fall down some stairs and hit your arm on the railing. And then we got to choose our color. I actually kind of dig that color right there. That's a sick color, though, too. I'm a big fan of anything that incorporates gold. Ooh, I like all these color schemes. I'll be honest with you. I like all of them. I actually especially like that white and purple right there. Cool. There's a couple of different maps that we can survivalificate on. Uh, there's the Skull of Izmir, Fenrir's Den, Alfar's Hideout, Heart of Midgard, Rise of Ig... Oh, we're already back at the beginning. We'll just do Heart of Midgard for right now. We'll leave the difficulty and everything on, like, standard. And we'll get her moving. So here we look upon the great and powerful fiefdom of Gergen. Gergen! A place where all are welcome and all are kind. And those who are not kind are armed with axes so that they may fall upon the others that are not kind. Uh, we start out with pretty much just like scouts and a longhouse right here. This is where I live, I guess conceptually, in the Jarl's homestead. Uh, we've got a number of things to take a look at inside the UI for right now, so let's get to that first. Uh, player name, city name, over here we've got our discontent, which is a new system that they've added on in where you've got to habitually kind of have feasts, otherwise people try to overthrow you. We've got our unit cap right now, we've got the amount of extra workers that we have available running around, we've got our food, we've got our mead, because what else could you need? You know, I love mead. I used to drink mead fairly frequently, but it's all imported where I live, so it's very, very pricey addiction if you want to get your hands on some mead. There is a meadery opening up where I live, or at least as of a couple years ago, they were like setting up funds and getting ready to go. But most of it's imported, so I had to give up the old mead, but I do love mead with like milling spices, you drink it warm or hot, oof. It's good stuff. We've got wood, we've got stone, we've got metal, we've got raw iron, we've got skins, and we've got clothing. Uh, these are all for, like, your basic production chains and whatnot you're going to be setting up, although the production chain aspect of the game is honestly not that hefty. Uh, first thing up that we need to do is we need to build a woodcutter's hut. As with most games like this, that's what you need to get done first because trees are the fundamental building block of all civilization. We also probably want to set up some farriers. Uh, so over here on every building that has, like, a 
production or a function, you're going to be able to assign workers. Uh, the amount of workers you have left is up here and also right here. I'll probably put in three right there. Having three workers just to move things from point A to point B and get them back to the stockpile is going to be a very useful thing to have. The other thing that we want to do is we kind of want to send our scouts out and we sort of want to start clearing out some of this fog of war so we can figure out what the boundaries of our territory look like and what areas might need to be defended. So I'm going to get going on that and I'm going to set up some basic infrastructure and then we'll come back with sort of a list of all the principal things we need to get done. Okay, so after a cursory glance, I think we've got a feel for the lay of the land and what our territory looks like. It looks like we're actually just in kind of like a thoroughfare or like a channel. This area is blocked off. We'll be able to access it later by donating a whole bunch of resources to the gods or whoever, and this gate will go away. And then we'll have to babysit this side. But for right now, there shouldn't be anything coming from that direction. Uh, everything appears to be up to the north. In the meantime, I went ahead and I built a couple of houses over here, and as you can see, our tree cutters are beginning to fell the forest. We're going to want to look after our food supply fairly shortly uh, so that we can get that moving, but as of right now, there's not a whole lot of tasks to get done. It's mostly just waiting for the wood to start to pile up and the goodies to start to happen. I have no idea what this is right here, but sure. Let's go take a look at it. Oh, it's a bandit camp. Run for your freaking lives, bros run just like flee yes run flee come back to town do what you got to do hopefully they don't follow you if they do follow you we are going to have a really really bad day here in the town of gurgan uh, the other things that we need to get built up before too long we're gonna want a hunter's hut i think that's gonna be fairly unavoidable so we'll put the hunter's hut like right here that looks good to me there's a bunch of animals over there I don't know if we need two hunter sets for right now for the supplying of food and leathers. It's a nice idea, but I don't know if it's like necessary. So I'm going to keep that one on the D low for right now. We are going to have to get rid of that bandit camp up there if we want to make any type of cumulative process though. An alternate idea is that it's not a terrible idea to set up a fisherman's hut. So we could do that. Let's put the fisherman's hut on him because that'll give us a slow trickle of food that I think happens regardless of season. This right here is the season wheel. Uh, basically, your harvests and whatnot go down during the winter and you've got to kind of like tighten your belts and get ready for it. And so anyways, fishermen can be nice to kind of get you through that trying time. Now that we've accumulated enough wood, I think it's time to get our military industrial complex working and kind of firing on all cylinders. The game does have a snapping mode. A lot of people might not be aware of it, but if you're a fan of keeping everything in sort of cubed grids, you can hold down shift and things will snap together and like perfectly space themselves and whatnot. Makes life a little bit easier. But there goes our training hall right there. Uh, this little training area is going to allow us to raise levies from our list of available workers. They will get converted into axemen for right now. We don't really have the logistics and the supply to get up to anything higher at the moment. But I do have bog iron over here, and I do have stone over here. So we're not really in that bad of shape. I would recommend that we start gathering stone now rather than later and getting that all ready to rock. And then also using all of our excess wood to continue putting down peasant huts over here so that we can increase our available supply of workers. It seems important to note that you can have 20 formations of soldiers no matter what, but it seems like you can have like an infinite amount of workers so long as you can supply food to them. I don't know if I've exactly hit that nail on the head just yet, but from some of the things I've been observing, do we have like a better spot? Wow, they're not really getting a whole lot of food from over there. It's kind of a bummer because it looked like there was a lot of animals on this side too. Yeah, go ahead and put their operational area over there because our food is definitely taking a little bit of a precipitous dip right now. Which is far too many peas for one statement, but like, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. We'll assign our stone gatherers over here so they'll start pulling in some rocks. I may... let's see here. So we've got axemen over here. It takes five population to spit out an axeman. All these houses are at maximum capacity. So I would say let's lock in, like, another couple houses. There we go. I just let them place randomly with their facings. Like, normally what I do, so when I first started playing this game, I like to scatter my houses around and have them kind of in a big circle, just randomly arrayed around the central, like, the central building, because I feel like that's more realistic when it comes to medieval settlements. Like, that tends to be what they did. They either radiated out from an initial defensive position, like a mot, or, like, a main longhouse, 
or they tended to kind of fan out around tributaries and water sources. Uh, but unfortunately in this game, I guess not unfortunately, this game just has a mechanic that makes that not ideal. Uh, basically every house needs something to be supplied in order for it to be happy. And one of the things it needs to be supplied with is community. And you can see that denoted by the white ring that's around the building right here. And so honestly, building in grids in this game is far more effective, even if I find that it doesn't look aesthetically appealing. And speaking of aesthetically appealing, I love the fact that this game has the same thing going on that Foundation does. Which, if you never played that game, it's a fantastic city builder. But anyways, Foundation has it so, like, as your peasants move around, they carve out roads naturally. This game also has that mechanic, and I am proud to say that I am here for it. I love it. Uh, let's go ahead and mash out two groups of Axemen. Our food is looking just absolutely atrocious right now. So hopefully the hunters over here, like, catch something or kill something at a junction. We actually don't have room for a whole lot of food production out here, which is kind of a bummer. The fishermen are doing what they can, but hopefully this number bounces back. I may need to chill on my population growth for a little bit, but when the first wave comes, I think we're absolutely going to need to have, like, two main units. One thing I think this game is sorely lacking at is that they need to give you, like, an economic readout. So you need spreadsheets, you need regressions, or at the bare minimum, when you mouse over some of these resources that are passively consumed by all the units and whatnot, uh, what should happen is it should tell you net per season how much you're gaining or losing. That way you can adjust the supply and, you know, know how much you have to build without going too crazy on the old supply front. Uh, we've got, like, two more villagers coming, so we'll have five available in just a minute. I'm thinking about doing another hunter's hut over here, but I don't really know if there's a point. Our first little, gr our first little group of, like, purple meanies are over here. We're going to send them out to clear out that bandit camp that's up to the north about as soon as possible. That's going to give us access to the rest of the map, and there are points of interest in things that we can loot. And for the time being, I think it's a really good idea that we start looting some of those caches. Uh, with these units right here, you can put them in formation by clicking and dragging with your right click just like you do in Total War or any of those sorts of games. I don't know if formational cohesion or anything like that is actually factored in to the combat effectiveness of the units in question, but it is an option that you can participate in and you can do. I just don't know if it's good or not. You guys hunting over here? I need you guys to start bringing some stuff in. I'm going to move their rally flag over to here. There we go. Get it a little bit closer to the things we're trying to kill. Winter's like almost over, so that's good. Got snow laying around. Oh no, we're going into autumn. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Or are we going into winter? We're going into winter. Uh, we've got a search point right here. There's a bunch of wagons laying around. I'm going to go ahead and go through that, see if we get anything good. Uh, we got some wood and we got some leathers. That's not terrible. The leather is going to allow us to make a clothier and start making armor and clothing. Uh, there's some bad guys over here. Let's go get them real fast. And then we can raid their camp afterwards. So into the fray, my friends. Uh, the combat animations in this game, perfectly passable. There are little fatalities and stuff too, Total War style, where occasionally you'll see one of these guys step out of formation and like hack another guy's head off or like do something else like that that's sort of like scripted. Uh, but other than that, it's all perfectly functional. Yeah, you see how he pulled him across and then slashed him? There's, like, fatalities and whatnot. Oh, we lost a couple units right there. That's a bit of a bummer. I was hoping that with the numerical superiority, we would do a better job at fighting them. But I guess not. We can search their camp, though, and see if we get anything out of it. And I think that's a really good place to start. There's also a men here over here. I think the men here gives you a blessing that basically buffs up all your units. And it's kind of like a push and pull type deal. So as the enemy's attacking, they're going to try to take these men here's back. And the men here is actually do make your soldiers better from what I understand. So like if you mouse over them, I'm pretty sure like their little attributes like speed and defense and attack will go up once we've captured the men here. I think. Huh. It seemed to the last time I played the game, but I guess we've got a blessing unlocked. Your characters do have abilities and things of that nature, uh, so we can send all of our guys into a blood rage, which increases their damage like crazy and allows them to basically hack through the enemy. Our scouts have an ability where they send out condors or like eagles or something like that to go scout the land. Uh, most of the units have a triggerable active ability that you can play around with. 
What is that right there? A wolf's den? Yeah, we should probably go raid that too. Our food seems to be like very, very slightly passively positive right now, which I think is really good. And we do have the resources at the moment to train up a third unit. So I would not be against that idea. All right. Where are these wolves at? We got to fight these wolves over here. There they are. All right, blood rage, everybody. I would like for this fight to be over swiftly, and I would like for it to be over violently. So get that all taken care of. And as you can see, their combat capabilities are quite good uh, when they go in with their battle rage. They kill stuff pretty fast. After we grab this over here, did I already visit that? Yeah, I did. Okay, so we got some more leathers and we got some more wood. Uh, it looks like there's another stone stockpile over here, which is going to be a nice thing to know about. Let's pull these guys back. If we get them inside the range of our training camp, we can replenish their numbers. And I think that's probably a good place to start. Pathfinding in this game can be a little bit rough. I have noticed that units get stuck on things or they seem to have some level of confusion every now and again. It's not like a persistent thing. It's just every now and again you notice that your units are kind of like working their way around an object. And eventually they will get past it. But like in that moment, if you need them to be at point B and they are at point A and they're really struggling to get in between those two points, it can be a minor annoyance. Let's go ahead and replenish them real fast. So that unit is replenished. I think it's a really good idea to get another team of Axemen real fast because our first wave should be coming up in about the next two or three minutes. I'm going to continue to prep and get things finished off over here. Apparently, my Jarl's longhouse is ready to be upgraded. I don't know if that's a wise idea or not for right now. It looks like what we're going to have to put into it is a decent amount of iron, but in fact, we haven't even begun collecting iron yet. I did put down some more houses down here so that we would potentially have like a slightly larger workforce. What does the well do so we can put out fires in the village? It sounds like a really, really good idea. I think I can probably get away with that. Let's go ahead and put down a well real quick. People like water. What does the altar do? So you get passive discontent decreases for the village. Okay, we have a burial mound. So the bodies of the dead warriors will be stored there. Okay. I think this sounds like a good spot for it. There we go. We'll put like a little memorial mound right there. I do very much like the artistry and the actual graphical representations of the game. Like, I think it looks very, very good. It's a little bit light on content for right now and like stuff to do. But given the fact that in six months they've put out five content patches that have added like two more missions to the campaign and have added like two or three unit types and like five or six building types and like upgrades and things of that nature, I'm of the opinion that they're actively working on it. It's just one of those games that like went into early access in a very bare bones way. Yeah, here comes our first raid. There they are right there. Okay, set up a formation over here. Get ready to receive them. And we will send them to Valhalla. And battle rage. Fall on them, boys. You guys encircle. I don't know if we get a bonus for this, but definitely encircle and flank if you can. Yeah, it seems to be doing a treat on that little group in the front. We've lost one guy, and it looks like they've lost about five. So, oh, three guys. Okay, fighting was a little bit hot, but it looks like we made it through our first wave. Assuming that is the last remnant of the wave. Okay, so now that our combat has been resolved, I think it'd be a really good idea to start looking after our food supply. We do need to supply that well right there, but it looks like we have enough population to where we can get two more fishermen's huts in. And I think that sounds like a really, really good idea. Why is my fishy boy hut not going? There we go. Give me my give me my old fishy boy hut right there. Fishy boy hut 5,000. And then we'll put this guy like right... Huh. It seems to have a very specific place it wants to be placed. There we go. We'll put you right there. Once those two are built up, our food supply is kind of like rowdy and atrocious right now. And so we got to work on getting that fixed up. It does look like our hunting zone is perfectly fine over here. I don't want to expand too far out into this territory... Just due to the fact that, like, the enemy is out there for level two. We got to hit some walls up. That's what I'm thinking. So how bad is this going to hit me right here? I'll lose five iron. This is doable. Let's do it. it. Looks like my houses are upgradable now, too. It requires a little bit of stone. But let's take these all up to the next tier. If I double click on them, will it select all of them? Looks like I can select multiples that way. 
Okay. But it won't, like, upgrade them all. Gotcha. All right, well, we'll just turn these into little huts and houses then. Oh, wow, these have eight capacity now. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're going to have, like, some massive population expansion here then. Uh, it's a good thing we got the food infrastructure in place because I feel like we're probably... We're probably going to take a little bit of food hit up here at the front. I do think we need to get our iron industry up and going, so I'm going to put in another collector's guild right over here just to grab this iron, and then I'm going to put a bloomery right behind it where they can get the impurities out of the iron and get it kind of turned into useful ingots. We do have a little bit of clothing left, and we do have a tanner over here, and so I'm not against the idea of a tanner as well. Let me see if I can get this rotated properly, though. There we go. So the tanner will be just kind of across the street from all the residential areas. Uh, we should have the workers to support all this new industry as well. If we wanted to get through this gate over here to get to, like, new thoroughfares and whatnot, it looks like we need 10 food. It looks like we need... Okay, well, we got another wave incoming. Well, that's not great. All right. I don't know if we're quite ready for another wave right now. How expensive is it for me to get, like, a palisade going? Because I do think that having a retaining wall around, like, the main important buildings is a good idea. Yeah. I think we could do something like that right there. Oh, I like how it naturally rounds. That's a cool idea. And it looks like we placed that in the middle of whatever else we have going on. So, realistically... Oh, it doesn't like that right there? Okay. Fair enough. I guess we can leave the hunter's hut on the outside of the village. Or I guess we've just got to push out a little bit further and kind of clinch one of these little gaps over here. Hmm. Fisherman's huts, are you guys doing your thing right now? I could pretty desperately use some more food. We'll replenish you real fast. I don't know how many soldiers I'm going to need to actually make this work. Uh, for the Collector's Guild, we'll go ahead and get them up and running so that we can get some Iron Rockin'. Bloomery, three more guys right there. It looks like it's mostly wolves that are attacking us right now, which is kind of a right. a strange thing. But okay. I can live with that. Uh, send them into battle. You guys come around this side and hit them. Perfect. Looks like one group of wolves is already down and we haven't even lost a man yet. Come on. Ah, we lost a guy. I was hoping we could flawless that fight real fast so it wouldn't cost me any resources. All right. Food's looking a little bit rough right now, but food delivery just came through, so could be worse. Discontent is rising. Okay. We'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, we've got very little wood coming in as well. I actually think it's probably time for us to tear this down. And then we'll probably move it over to this forest over here, maybe. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll move it over to there. Sir, can you replenish real fast? Yeah, go ahead and replenish for me. You guys fall back and continue to hold the line here. I think this many units should be enough. There we go. I just want everybody in base contact with the enemy. Their battle rage, unfortunately, is... There it goes. All right, so we'll battle rage out for a second because it does look like for a second we were getting the worst of the exchange right there. Food is still not great. But we do have food waiting pickup in some of these locations as well. So I think in the end, it'll probably be okay. Uh, the downside is we don't really have the food right now to replenish any of our... U hey, there they go. And there it goes. <laughs> war is an expensive business. I'll tell you what. Uh, war has become a very expensive business. 
I probably should not have upgraded as many of these as I wanted to, but that would have been a place where having like a regression line or like some kind of contextual indicator of how much food you're using per season versus how much you're producing per season would have been really, really helpful. As of right now, I'm kind of flying blind. We do have food available. It just hasn't been moved to the stockpile yet. I don't know if we actually have... We can do a farmhouse. Yeah, let's do a farmhouse. I didn't realize that we unlocked an actual farm proper. Let's do that. I mean, that's kind of rocky soil right there, so I have my doubts how useful it's going to be. But yeah, throw that together. That actually seems like a really good use of our supplies. We'll go ahead and supply this right here. We'll put their harvesting flag right there so that they basically have endless wood to play around with for the next 20 minutes or so. And hopefully the farmhouse will kind of dig us out of this. Then again, if the issue is one of logistics, I don't think that it will. I actually think that the transit time, we have too many things being moved around right now. And unfortunately, we can't really allocate that by a whole lot. Uh, the reason being is the Elder's Hall, so it gives us unique settlement abilities. Okay. I was sort of hoping that there would be... I was sort of hoping that there would be a building in here that gave us more farriers or more couriers because we have buildings right now that are unserviced as you can see from the indicators right here and that's where we're running into problems alas there does not seem to be a building that just gives you like four more people that cart stuff back to the central longhouse there is a warehouse over here but the warehouse is limited by the availability of a tier 3 Jarl's Hut. Which, in all honesty, we can do pretty soon, I think. But for now, is kind of outside of our reach. It'll sort of depend. It does look like these little lines change. So I think this is the current location that our couriers are going to versus the final location that our couriers would be going to. Uh, but we do need more food. Like, I need more units, I need more guys, I need more peepo. And so, like, if we could get some food and stuff together, that'd be great, because I don't think we're going to hold for much longer. But this is Frozenheim. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, the game is early in its early access trip right now. But it does show a lot of promise as a game, especially when it comes to things that I enjoy, like survival mode. And so anyways, I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, but as of right now, the game is available on Steam. I would give you the warning, though, at the end of the video that there isn't, like, a ton of content here. Like, I think that the, like, four to eight hours of content assessment is probably pretty solid for right now. And so anyways, this would be one of those ones that I would wishlist and watch how it develops rather than jumping in right now because I don't want people to be disappointed. But that's mostly just due to the content not being fully implemented into the early access just yet. Not due to any restraints with regards to, like, the quality of the game itself or to, like, bugs or to things like that. I actually think that what they have is pretty rad, uh, but there just needs to be more of it. And so, you know, keep an eye on the early access. Frozenheim. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to do that. Today up on the chopping block, we had Frozenheim. Tomorrow we will very likely have something else. I will see you guys all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and that's about all I got for you. Bye-bye, everybody.